So a little while ago, I got to thinking about how cheap a kit uh, for, for doing electronics could you put together and, and still effectively do it. Um, and, and so the idea here is to, is, is to get maybe an entry level kit that provides you all the tools that you need to investigate electronics, maybe do some repairs, uh, build some things, some little projects and stuff like that, and still, you know, be able to get all that done in a reasonable way at a very low cost. And what I, I put up a price limit of 250 Canadian dollars on it. And that list here is, is, is what I came up with so far. So you can see here the digital multimeter function generator, adjustable bench power supply, so on down to solar breadboards. And that all came to $211.63 Canadian dollars, which is around about 160 US, I think, at the current exchange rates. And uh, I put in here optional was a, a surplus scope probe and a banana plug alligator clip cable that I picked up at a local electronic surplus shop. You could get by without these, but they'd be nice to have. And so the, the, the total here is $222.63. We still have a little bit of wiggle room left in case one of these uh, instruments or tools here is totally useless and we need to replace it with something else. So I, I still like to keep it below $250 altogether, but we'll see where this all goes in the long run. So anyway, let's, let's have a look. The, for this video here, I just want to have a brief look at all of the things on this list and uh, you know pull them out of their bags or packages and stuff like that and just have a quick look at them. And then uh, in subsequent videos, we'll go through uh, taking a closer look at them and, and actually using them to do stuff. So without any further ado, Here is the pile of stuff that I managed to put together for $222 and some odd cents. So let's go through these things one by one. Let's start off with what we had on the top of the list there. Let's start off with the multimeter. Now this one, I, I don't know about this. It looks like it kind of might have got a little bit hurt. We can have a quick look inside comes with some uh, non-alkaline batteries, which, which is actually pretty good. They may not last a long time, but then again, these are, don't tend to leak like alkaline batteries do and uh, destroy your equipment, which I, I have had happen in the past. Well, it comes with a screwdriver. I would guess that'd be for replacing the battery. It comes with a set of probes. Eh, they don't feel awful. I mean, they're not the greatest, of course, but they don't feel awful. I mean, there's not much you can expect for $25.98. And by the way, uh, this meter, uh, as, as soon as I bought it, it went out of stock and then it came back in stock at a considerably higher price. So we'll see if it was worth the $25.98 or at the current price with tax, probably about $35. I'm not sure it's gonna be worth 35, but we'll see if it's worth the 25. It comes with a set of instructions. Okay, so that's, that's the meter. Looks nice, it's got a nice color to it, kind of a swoopy shape. It's not typical of, uh, of a, 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 a multi multimeter these days, but there. Uh, now, what else is, what is the next one? A function generator kit. I think that's, is that this kit or is that this kit? this kit here. So this is the this is the function generator kit. It's one of those um, really, really inexpensive $13.90 for this kit. I don't know if we can expect much out of it for that, uh, but it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be pretty good. He's, I've seen a lot of uh, YouTube videos about it on, on YouTube. Um, and people don't think it's that bad for what it costs and what it can do. So, comes with a little sheet of paper, circuit board, and all the parts. Very nice. And it comes with a little acrylic case, too, that needs to be put together. So, do we have any specifications on here? No, we don't. I will look into those once we uh, once we build it up and and then and put it through its paces. So that should be a lot of fun to build that. Put these parts back in. Now I have seen uh, one person uh, complain that 
that uh, you have to do some trimming to the case to fit as, as if the person who designed and built the case was not the person who designed and built the circuit board which is entirely possible but that again is something we will have to see now next on the list is an adjustable bench power supply now power supply is a very 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 important tool to have um, without them you can't power any of your projects and uh, you know if, if, if uh, to give you a tour and I might do that in another video I'll give you a tour of my lab and see that I have I have many, many, many power supplies around here. If I didn't pick up another one the other day, maybe I'll try to find a knife and get into this, this box. There we go. You know, this doesn't look half bad. Hmm. The one I ordered actually didn't have the digital display on. So that's nice. That's nice. So it's, it's uh, I believe it, um, yeah, 1.5 to 15 volts DC, 0 to 2 amps, regulated power supply. Now, I would imagine that by the weight of this thing, this is a switching power supply. So the other limitations, um, but, I mean, it, it, it should be great for powering up small project and stuff like that next item is a temperature controlled soldering iron now they're they're important um, it's a regular old soldering iron it can do more damage than good unless you're you're extremely experienced at soldering um, so a temperature controlled iron is, a, is an important thing to have it allows you to set the temperature so that the components that you're soldering together um, don't get damaged from heat. And um, it allows you to turn up the heat in case you need to in order to do uh, things like soldering uh, large areas of copper or something like that. So it, it, it's handy to have them adjustable and it's also a lot safer. Now this one also has interchangeable tips. It comes with a selection of tips here, which is nice. I think I like that one best. Um, that one's not too bad, but I, I like those. I like the little chisel points. They get, allow you to get a little bit of uh, extra uh, area on the component that you're um, soldering. And this one has a display too. Now there, there were other versions of this that are a little bit cheaper. This one wasn't that expensive though. It was twenty-seven dollars and eleven cents um, on off switch. And here's your temperature control. And it's got a display. It's nice having a display, so it'll see you'll be able to see where the, you set the temperature, and hopefully it'll be uh, roughly correct. I, I do have a, a a meter for testing the temperature of soldering iron, so we'll check that out when we come to uh, using it. And it comes with some instructions. A really really pathetic little stand, and uh, <laughs> I guess that's a cleaning sponge. That should be interesting, and it comes with some solder, and a nice tweezers. Well, nice. We'll see. We're getting some tools along with this. This is great. All right. Now the next item we have up for grabs here. Oh, by the way, that bench supply was forty-two dollars and ninety-three cents. So that that wasn't cheap. I mean, for about ten bucks more, you can get a more substantial supply. But we'll see how this one behaves. I mean, it's nice and small, which is nice. The other ones, the more expensive ones, are bigger, clunkier, and they take up a little bit more room. But let's see how this one works. Now this is the I. I I really I, I can't pronounce that um, so it's, it's this oscilloscope now that oscilloscope is available in a kit but you know it was considerably more as a kit than it was pre-built so I went ahead and I got the, the pre-built one and this is a this is a very famous uh, DSO 128 or 138 a lot of people have, have um, YouTube videos on this too, so if you want to look them up, um, people seem to be fairly impressed with it. Now it, it comes with a, uh, a little uh, alligator clip probe, and that's that's it, and the instructions, of course, which are 
Uh, compared to the other instructions that we've gotten so far, these are quite complete. We'll have to go through them at the appropriate time. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, all these things, uh, there's YouTube videos about most of these things out there. You, you, you can have a look at them in the meantime before we get around to having a closer look at them. But we'll put that there and continue on with our little list. Oh, I wonder what these are for? I guess for attaching it to something. You snap it in there. Or feet, yeah. You use those as feet. Perfect. Quite a pile of packages here. Next thing we have on the list is a, is a oh yes, if you're going to do some soldering, you're going to make mistakes. So you can pick up a solder sucker. Uh, these are, you know, you, you heat up the joint with the soldering iron, it uses the solder sucker to suck the solder away and you can remove your components or do whatever else you need to correct or to replace components. They're, they're really handy for that. This was only $3.22. I mean, you, 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 there's no way you could build one for that. This is incredibly cheap. Uh, I wonder how it works. We'll find out. Um, another important tool that I find is, is, is flush cutting pliers. Now, these are really, really important for when you're doing, when you're doing, uh, I think it's these, when you're doing any kind of circuit building, and especially PCBs and stuff like that, you want to be able to uh, trim off any components underneath. So, I mean, like in, in this case here, when I put these resistors and capacitors into this board here, I trimmed off all the leads. Up. So you use a flush cutting pl cutter for that. Um, this one here, it doesn't look terribly bad. Looks like a nice sharp jaws that line up. That's important that they line up. Now what they do, they'll, they'll wear over time and they won't line up anymore and they won't cut properly. But uh, this should last a couple of years anyway. And this was $7.90. A very important tool though for anything in electronics. Now the next thing we have here is a nine piece screwdriver set. Of course we're going to need screwdrivers for getting into things and there's no point in doing electronics unless you get into things. So how do we open this up? I guess we have to cut again. And of course I misplaced my, my knife for the few milliseconds that I I haven't been using it. There we go. So it's got a handle, a large handle for torque, and it's got the screwdrivers go in like that. But you could use them like this too if you didn't need to apply as much torque. And you have a nice selection here. You got uh, three different sizes of Phillips screwdrivers, three different sizes of flat blades. Probably got a little crowbar. I guess you could use that for larger ICs or something like that, or for pulling stuff up that needs to be pulled up and a little awl for uh, that'd be great for marking things where you're going to go drill so you could punch a, a mark for your drill to go through and yeah that looks pretty good actually it feels nice it, it, it's got a nice rubbery feeling handle to it it's, it's, it's pretty good I feel like a lot of torque with that next on our list oh and by the way that was $13.55. And next is, is a four piece plier set. Now, pliers are uh, another important tool. You can't do much in electronics without having some. Some of these hand tools are very, very, very important. Let's see what we've got here. Mmm. Nice uh, Far East uh, industrial oil smell to them. And here we go, we have another side cutter. A side cutter is handy for cutting tougher things than you would cut with a flush cutter. So they, they, they're generally a heavier jaw on them. And so it looks like you could do some flush cutting too. Like it, it's, it's, it's not bad in that respect. The finish on it is a little bit rough, but this uh, four piece set costs $18. I guess we can't expect um, premium quality for that, but these, they seem good enough that they should last many years and be handy. This is a small needle nose. It's also got a side cutter in it as well. So you've got lots of cutting options there. Ah, these, these, are, these are pin pliers. These are really, really handy for bending components, for bending leads on components. Yeah, these are great. I, don't, I actually don't even have a set of these in my normal electronics tools. I have a set upstairs in the garage 
and that's I usually run up to get them whenever I need them but uh, now I have a set and here is a bent nose needle nose pliers these are handy for getting into things they're very great for, for, for placing components down like if you have to place something in an odd angle get into a place like that it's it really really good for that so that's a nice little set of pliers there and next on our list is a wire stripper. And this has also got a cutter on it too, I believe. So yes, yeah, it's, it's got a cutter there too for cutting wire. So you've got multiple cutters here. You don't have to take your flush cutter and use it, damage it by cutting something really hard with it. You've got other options. And this will cut, this will do wire all the way down to 22 gauge. And I believe it'll go to 20, 20 gauge for, um, for strided wire, 22 gauge for solid wire. And they, they, they look they look pretty nice they like they've got, they've got nicely nicely honed jaws on them it's also got little um shear cutters too i guess they say for copper only uh, so you could you could shear larger wires with it like number 14 or number 12 or number 10 copper wire with it be, not that you do use, use that much in electronics they were ten dollars and 16 cents now, I also got a couple of these uh, solderless breadboards. These came, uh, I didn't get these, everything else came off of Amazon. I had to go to, um, I had to go to eBay to get these. Now these ones here, these are the, the, the ones that are SYB 120s. I got a set of two of them for $4.46 shipped to me. And I'll, and I'll show you why I went there. Now. You can go on to, you can get all sorts of them up on, on uh, Amazon, but they tend to be, they tend to be like this, these Elegoo things, uh, these are just awful. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, one nice thing about them is that they're really easy to insert stuff into them, like there's, there's no trouble. These ones are a little bit tough to insert, but they hold on to the wire a heck of a lot better and make much better electrical connections. These ones are, are, are very popular. They have, I guess the, the, the whole Arduino crowd made these very popular, but they weren't using these Elegoo ones. Now what these things are pretty good for, so if you have, if you have something like, uh, that's not coming out. It's because I have it in a good board. Um, you have something like this with pins on it, heavy pins. These Elegoos work fine for that situation because they're, they, you know, they, it allows you to get them in and out and they have enough contact. They contact these fairly well, but you can't build up much this way. Like I think I was working on a project here and I gave up on it because I just couldn't get the contacts reliable enough. Sometimes, you know, you'd have a half a volt drop because the component was going in, not making proper contact. So it, stay away from the Elegoo ones. Just these ones here, I like these. These work really well. And for the price, they can't be beat. Now, in order to make use of those. I got here a little spool of 22 gauge solid wire. So a stripper is going to come in handy to cutting little wires in order to be able to wire things up on your, your breadboard. And we'll demonstrate that when we get around to the breadboard. But this little spool of wire, wire is not cheap. It's got $10.46, but it, there's a lot of wire here. You'll be able to make up a whole pot of jumpers with that. So that's the basic kit there. Um, it, it's quite a bit of stuff. And uh, I think it's going to be able to provide us with enough tools and instruments to make a pretty good job of an electronics hobby. And we'll, we'll find that out. Um, and here, there's a couple of those optional items. So here is the, uh, here's the banana plug to alligator cable which is going to be handy for the power supply. I mean that you could, you could just put wires in like this. This has a terminals where you can put wires in underneath there and, and clamp them down and you can connect up that way. But this makes it a bit easier where you can just plug these in like that. Put the red in the red, and the black in the black and then connect it up to whatever piece of equipment with the alligator clips. So that, these should come in handy, uh, but like I say, they are optional. And the other optional item is this scope probe, which is actually a nice scope probe. It's, it's from Picotech. They make good stuff. 
And this is actually a really nice one to one, 10 to one. And I think it's, it's, it's rated at 100 megahertz. So this one here, TA386. No, this, this is actually rated at 200 megahertz. This is a nice probe. Um, and that, that'll come in handy on the oscilloscope in, you know, in working with an oscilloscope the way you're supposed to work with it rather than with these alligator clips. Although, like I said, this will work, but this will provide you with a little bit better um, probing ability, especially with, with, you know, like this little shroud on here, it allows you to get right in and touch an IC lead or something like that without shorting it out something else. It also will have some other accessories in here. So here's your, your grounding clip here. compensation tool so you, you hook that up to the scope and then you compensate it so that it, it behaves properly with the scope um, I'll show you how to do that when we get around to looking at the scope and uh, here's your ground clip and a probe clip now one thing it doesn't look like it has is, is a it doesn't have a spring tail ground but that's okay. This is going to be a lot better than just the allocator clips anyway. So there we have it. That's our kit. And it's quite an extensive little kit. I will get, my, my plan is to um, get this soldering iron and build this kit here with it. This big scanner kit. Um, and that's how I'll test out the soldering iron. And then once we get the big scanner kit built, we can check it out with the DMM and with the oscilloscope to make sure everything's working. So we'll, we'll, we'll go along through getting all the tools working together and then we'll start working on some little projects um, with the breadboards and, and using these tools and instruments um, to do some electronics. So that's it. Now I have one other thing to show you. Just came in the mail yesterday. Um, and it's, it's, it's something I just got on a whim. And I'm also going to, you know, use it as my, my first project with this kit of parts. And this is, 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 is this little kit here, which is supposed to be a frequency counter um, and crystal tester. So I guess the idea is it's got a counter and it's also got a front end that, that will uh, oscillate a crystal. So you can see what, whether A, the crystal works at all and what frequency it's oscillating at. So this should be a good little kit to get started. Um, so we'll, we'll come to this at some point and fill that up together and uh, see how that goes. Now, if, if you'd rather do something else, if you'd rather me start with something else in the next video, rather than building up the um, uh, function generator, uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, maybe we'll do that. But uh, until we get started on this, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.